Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be reading chapter 7 and 8 from The Orange Outlaw by Ron Roy. If you're not subscribed, then please make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, as well as the notification bell. Also, make sure to hit the like button as well. But, let's get started on reading The Orange Outlaw by Ron Roy. Chapter 7 Still think the crook is Miss Cornelius, Stink asked as they walked back up to the tenth floor. Miss Cornelius' description sure does sound like Mrs. Booker, Ruth Rose admitted. Dink laughed. Bad posture, baggy clothes, orange hair, sounds more like Josh. He opened the door to his uncle's apartment. There you are, Uncle Warren said. Thank you for cleaning up. What a lovely surprise. Ready for blueberry pancakes? I am, Josh said heading for the kitchen. I'm not sure if you guys can read this, so let me zoom in a little bit. After taking his first bite of pancake, Dink reached into his pocket for the folded paper towel. He pulled out the orange hair and showed it to his uncle. Josh found this stuck to one of the chairs. He said, we think it came from the crook. Dink's uncle studied the hair. This is odd looking. Wait, I will be right back in a jiffy, he said. The kids heard cup cupboard doors opening and closing. A minute later, Dink's uncle was back, carrying a small wooden box. He moved the pancake platter to one side and set the box in its place. Then he pulled off the lid, revealing a shiny microscope. He plugged the microscope's cord into one wallet outlet. Josh, may I have one of your hairs? Sure, Josh grimaced as he yanked out a hair. Then he passed the hair to Uncle Warren. Dink's uncle laid both hairs on a glass slide, then placed the slide under the microscope's lens. He adjusted the scope and put one eye to it. Well, I think it's a real hair, Uncle Warren said after a minute. But it's very different from yours, Josh. Take a look. Your hair is one is the one on the right. Josh bent over the scope. All I see is nothing, he said. Try closing one eye, Uncle Warren said. Wow, that's better, Josh said. The hair looks like tree trunks. Ruth Rose went next. The hairs do look different, she said. Look, Dink. Dink closed one eye and peered through the lens. The hair on the right was thin and smooth looking. The one on the left was fatter and more orange than the other one. Miss Cornelius told us she saw someone on her balcony with orange hair, Dink said. She did, Uncle Warren said. Ruth Rose nodded. She has this mag neat magnifying glass attached to her balcony door, she said, so she can watch the birds at her feeders. I looked through it, Dink told his uncle. It makes stuff look bigger and clearer. He told his uncle how Miss Cornelius had described the person on her balcony. Baggy coat and poor posture? Well, well, maybe she really did see our thief then. Uncle Warren said, I'd better call Detective Costello. While his uncle dialed the phone, Dink motioned for Josh and Ruth rose to follow them. They left the apartment, but Dink walked past the elevator. Where are we going, Josh said. I wanted a few more of those pancakes. Let's walk down, Dink said, shoving open the exit door. I don't want anyone to see us. See us what, Ruth Rose says, asked. 
I want to get one of those, one of Miss Booker's hairs, Dink said. I don't want Roger to see us, just in case they're part of me. So now you think they did it together? I don't know, but we can't take any chances, Dink said. Oh boy, Josh said, skipping down the stairs. Dink and Ruth Rose followed Josh. How do you plan to get a hair? Ruth Rose asked. Dink shrugged. I don't know yet, he admitted. Out of breath, the kids finally reached the lobby. Dink peeked around the corner to make sure Roger wasn't watching. Then they hurried out the rear exit. They didn't see Miss Booker behind the building. Josh took a look down the alley, but she wasn't there. Looks, let's look out the front, Ruth Rose suggested. Dink and Josh followed Ruth Rose down the alley. They were halfway to the front of the building when Ruth Rose bent down and picked something off the ground. Dink and Josh caught up and looked over her shoulder. Ruth Rose was holding a Polaroid snapshot. It was a picture of a frame painting. Dink gasped when he recognized the boat's, the rowboat floating on the pond. It's a picture of the stolen painting, he asked. He said. In the picture here, there is the painting in front of the Eiffel Tower here with the painting right here. If you can't see that, I will bring the book up. As you can see, the painting is the same as Uncle Warren's painting. But let's move on to chapter 8. In the photograph, the painting stood on a table. Part of a window was also visible, with buildings in the distance. Josh asked, What's this doing in the alley? I think I know, Ruth Rose said. The thief must have used this picture to identify the painting after he stole it. He threw the picture away. If the thief tossed the picture here, that means he probably did climb down the buildings. Dink said, you mean she, Josh said. Ruth Rose shook her head. But if Miss Booker did it, she asked, why would she tell us she can climb building? Wouldn't that just point her the finger at her? Maybe she's giving us false clues. Josh said, she tells us she can climb the building and drops this picture in the alley. But all the time, she probably just went through the front door with her key. No matter who stole the painting, Ding said, the crook's fingerprints should be on this pic picture. He carefully slipped the snapshot inside his shirt. We have to show it to my uncle. The kids ran down the alley to the front of the building. Weekend traffic whizzed by. A few people hurried toward the subway stop. A man in gray work clothes was sweeping up litter. A mound, of, a mound of litter stood at the entrance to the alley. As the kids walked past, Josh accidentally kicked the pile. Hey, watch your step, young fella, said the man with the broom. Sorry, Josh said, stepping away from the litter. Using his foot, foot he scraped the stuff back together. Then he knelt down and picked something out of the debris. Hey guys, look! Josh held up an orange peel. The man with the broom chuckled. There was a block party here last night. A guy had a trailer with an orangutan and a pony parked right here. Man, that orang orangutan sure ate a lot of oranges. Dink took the peel from Josh and looked at it carefully. Caught in the peel was a long orange hair. Ruth Rose peered over Dink's shoulder. It's just like the hair Josh found in the kitchen, she said. Josh looked back up the alley. Guys, he said, Miss Booker didn't climb up those balconies that orangutan did. Ruth Rose's eyes grew wide. Orangutans are great climbers, she said, and they, they have long orange hair and eat fruit. You mean you think the orangutan is the thief? Why not? Josh said. People train orangutans to do all kinds of stuff. Why couldn't one be taught to steal a painting? 
Dink tapped the snapshot inside his shirt. If you're right, his fingerprints should be on this. Do orangutans even have fingerprints? It was asked. Dink shrugged. Whoever gave him the picture would have left his fingerprints on too. His trainer, Josh said. Rethros nodded. Yup, the orangutan might have taken the painting, but the real thief is the person who taught him how. Okay, we have reached our ending point, and I really hope you enjoyed today's video. In my next video, I'll read chapter 9 and 10, and possibly finish the book, the video, after the next video. Thank you for listening, and I really hope you enjoyed today's video, and remember, Please also hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell and the thumbs up button as well. Thank you for listening and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.